If you love the album Fieldy's Dreams by Fieldy of Corn, um, then Blue Sky is for you. No, I, I don't know what that. Uh, I don't. I don't really know how what that has to do. That's that's a, that's a pure. When you sign up for Blue Sky, they ask you, "What do you think about Fieldy's Dreams?" And you're like, "Oh, baby, Hugh Hef, I love it." Hi, everybody. Welcome to the program. It's Wednesday. I just got back from a trip to the P.O. Box. Uh, it's it's Monkey Monday. Um, and I figured, what's open this box? Do I have anything to open this box with? I don't know that I do. I've got a, a, a comb here that my daughter has left. It's plastic, so that, but it's going to get the tape up a little bit, just enough for me to get in here. Okay. We're through one part of the tape. If you want to send uh, something to the P.O. Box, it's on, it's on the screen you're watching right now. I mean, if you're on Twitch anyway. That's the only place that the P.O. Box is posted is on my Twitch live page. Um, which is fine. It's, <laughs> I don't know. Need to get out there so more people can. No, it's, it's uh, if you have any energy drinks or whatever that you want to send. Did you miss the drinking of the dragon soup? No, it's it's I it's alcohol, so I, I have a hard time uh, scheduling that in with all the kids and everything. This has eBay stickers in here. It's an eBay box, and I thought maybe if someone was just reusing a box, but maybe this is just did someone buy something on eBay and have it shipped directly here? That's weird. No, it, that's not that weird. All right, this is clearly a can of some kind of beverage. It's well packaged, so if, if you're if you're writing eBay feedback for this uh, shipment, um, well packaged would buy again a plus 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 plus. Do I want your Spyro clock? I I don't. No, no. I'm just gonna say no. I mean, thank you, but. Uh, Battle broth energy. Gamer flavor. Is this for real? Oh my gosh. This is, uh... I mean, it's, it's, it's incredibly well packaged. That's amazing. Um, this is like a, the best... The best packaged uh, energy drink I've received so far. Um... It's made of chair squeezins, uh, from, took, taken from uh, several esports events. When you drink it, you'll say, "Make more Marines." Yeah, battle broth energy gamer flavor. That's disturbing. Everything the body needs contains little to no nutrients the body actually needs. Please see nutritional facts for more information. Manuf oh, it's, it's from the Yeti, the t-shirt people, right? They, is that what they mainly do, is make t-shirts? Official Battle Broth sponsored partner Battophobe says it's not trash. Well... Uh, I, I don't really know what to make of this. Like if you told me this was a fake drug, I'm almost afraid to open it because it seems fake, but like also it's it, the, the likelihood that it is just a dollar store energy drink with this label put over it, uh, is, is pretty high. So, um, and we have until May of this year to drink it. So it's not, it has not gone bad. Um, it does seem to have an appropriate, like real, uh, ingredients label five calories so it does qualify for our list we won't drink it now because it's not cold um but this is uh thanks to whoever made this come our way this showed up on uh, this sort of the day after christmas i got a text message saying there's the, the, we've stuffed your box full of garbage and i said fantastic um 
gamer in the gamer flavor appears to be written in a modified version of the GameStop font. If I'm, I'm just guessing, but uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Thanks for uh, yeah. Thanks to whoever made this happen. Uh, we'll we'll check it out probably within the next week or so because I honestly I I don't have uh I the the stocks of energy drinks are low. It's kind of nice. In a weird way, not having cases and cases of drinks stacked up everywhere, uh, which is a good problem to have. Huh? Um, okay, a uh, small rewarder on the Discord has posted a link to the page on the Yeti where they're selling this. Swill. Uh, wait, loaded up with over 100 milligrams of caffeine to power up your life? Over 100 milligrams, it might as well be saying like it has uh, like some caffeine in it. But that's not, over 100 is not a good number. And their page says, this is a real product you can buy, which is, uh, I, I appreciate that they have, have to say that. Um, blast your buds with the taste that no one can describe with the human language. I still don't know what energy drinks taste like, but that doesn't matter. What matters is fragging noobs, making them rage quit with your super dank no scopes. Bet. Bet is a weird thing to put on that. Um, okay. Yeah, this page also has very little in terms of like the actual contents of the drink, which I, I suppose is, is fun in its own way. Um, All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll blast our buds. Uh, maybe maybe Friday, maybe next week, or do something like that. Yeah. It, it yes. It definitely reads like a Think Geek April Fool's gag. I mean, it's a gag product, right? I mean, it's not. They're having some fun over there. <laughs> but I do want to peel the label off of it and see what it really is. And see if it has. Uh, see if they they got it. You know, if if there's something they had custom made. Or if they just made the labels and went to the store and bought uh, some straight up trash and put the labels on them. Um, we'll have to find out the hard way, I suppose. Um, 20th anniversary of Trackmania passed recently and I was in the car going to the P.O. Box earlier this morning and heard some of the worst d d dubstep remixes I've heard in a good long time and it got me jonesing for a little bit of Trackmania. So I thought maybe we, we dip into that this morning and see what's, uh, see what's what in the, in the world of tracks, in the track world. Um... Oh, it's gonna it, ha it has to load Ubisoft Connect, which is going to want to patch, and then the game will probably want to patch. This might this might be a bust. This might be a bust. I'm gonna shut off the au the audio stream here. If you're on Mixler, you're gonna have to jump over to Twitch now for the rest of the story. Page two. Why did, yes, why does you play? Okay, okay, this is the third time you play has asked me for elevated uh, access. All right, thanks, Burner Phone, for allowing me to broadcast audio. Did this pro. <laughs> now a Windows pop up has appeared and it's saying, did this program work correctly? The program compatibility assistant in Windows is asking me like, hey, uh, is everything okay over there? Because it doesn't look good. Okay. They've added a new intro to this that uh, you were missing, but I will. And me capturing the game has led to it skipping the intro, and so now no one gets to see it. That's okay. Fun little remix of the Trackmania music.
Yeah, the story of Trackmania. Uh, it's about a boy who falls into a portal and comes out the other side and he has no idea where he is, but it's a world where racing is king and all, uh, all matters, all conflicts are determined, uh, by racing and dubstep. Is this just, uh, is Trackmania just down? This update came out yesterday, so it's not update day. I was like, did they... Is it, uh, did the update just hit today? Okay. All right. This is, uh, let's see if, uh, any windows pop-ups that are blocking me, any kind of, no, no, it doesn't seem like, uh, this is going good. I like this new version of the song. Let's quit and, and relaunch. Do I want to quit track mania? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. But I can't quit track mania. If I could quit track mania, I would have done it by now. All right, apparently, no. Okay, there it is. I was like, apparently that also closed the Uplay client, which is funny. Um, but no. All right, let's try this again. We're going to push the play button on Steam. The, the Uplay client is already launched, so... Surely... Mm -hmm. Well, now you'll get to see this. It's crazy to think how um, much time I have spent playing Trackmania over the years, considering when Trackmania first came out 20 years ago, I remember taking one look at it and being like, what is this fucked up trash? What is this ridiculous bullshit? What am I even looking at here? This thing is a mess. What the heck is happening? Why would anyone play this? Um... Now I understand. I was like, oh, this is some fucked up bullshit right here. I think the thing that happened is, you know, like they put Trackmania games out on consoles and stuff. And, uh, you know, and this one is out on consoles now. And, and it makes a little more sense nowadays that you know, it's online and everything. But they put Trackmania out on like the DS. And it's like, what? It's you, you don't get the true flavor of Trackmania unless you can be connected to a server that... Um, lets you play a billion different user-made racetracks. And so without that, uh, without that, it's all sort of pointless. Um, there we go. Go now. Oh, okay. All right. I didn't necessarily want to actually go now. So what do we have here in the library? Streamers campaign. Okay, so we've got some other, I guess, solo track packs here. The live screen looks like it always does. Let's uh, look at the let's look at the new single player campaign here a little bit. Does this look? Uh, I might need to make an adjustment right here. Nope, that's fine. Uh, No, maybe this is fine either way. Ah, wood. So I, I was reading some of the patch notes, and I guess wood uh, is a is a new sur surface for this track mania, anyway. Oh, and you're much more squirrely on it. Okay, we, we're gonna. A wood and ice rage.
Oh yeah, you are very squirrely on the wood. Not going to be a gold medal time this time. Yeah, there was patch notes uh, today saying something about wood and some changes they made to some some wood changes that they rolled out. Uh, so I don't know if the wood is still uh, controversial or if it broke a bunch of stuff, but there's there was something in the patch notes that said like if you need to use the old like podium. Um, you can call it this way or, or whatever, um, or, or tracks made before this date are going to handle this way. So it looks like they found a way to kind of cram in some backwards compatibility or something. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but, oh, ah, 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 there we go. Yeah, they fixed the wood. Hey. Stay there. I assume it's because I, I am paying for the, the whatever access, but like all of these ads are for in-game events. Uh, But also, I wonder, you know, like, you know, there's like, who's the dedicated sales team that's out there trying to sell ads inside of Trackmania? And how does that job work? Where you've got to go to like, you know, AM, PM and say like, yeah, you should advertise hot dogs inside your game, which was, AM, PM was in the last Trackmania for a really long time. <laughs> uh... Like on top of all the uh, the the checkpoints and stuff, there were just ads for like, hey man, go to AMPM, get a fucking hot dog. And I'm like, yes, there are no AMPMs near me, but I would do that if I could. Uh... But like, who's the person that has to go out there and sell ads to appear in Trackmania? All right, we'll, we'll settle for gold here. They've changed some of the monetization in this game uh, to... Oh my God! What the hell? This is terrifying. Ah! Did that really? Did they do that? Did anyone else see that? The part where I turned into a tiny weird truck? That. I like that they found a way to put the truck in. That's uh, the the or the the snow car, I guess, if you want to call it that. But like they, you know, they've had. It used to be that they would have different tile sets, and the different tile sets would have a different vehicle with a different handling model. 
And so you would play stadium to drive the stadium car, and if you, you know, like, and so on and so forth. But, uh... I like the idea of just, like, if you want to have it, the player be the truck, then turn him into the truck. But I need to be able to skin my truck. We need truck skins. Do we have truck skins? That's okay. Yeah. That is very much. So close. So close. We're leveling up our prestige skin. Which I don't... I don't really care for their skin. I mean, the whole point is you can skin your... You know, the whole point was you could join clubs and skin your vehicle and do all that stuff. And, but I guess on console, you can't really do that. So it makes sense for them to add uh, that idea. I'm gonna face it straight here. There we go. Much better. That's cool. I hope people are still making tracks. I hope that this game is still attracting an audience and and all that because it seems like some of the stuff they're adding to the, you know, for people that want to make tracks is crazy. Wood and the snow car and, and all of that sort of stuff. That's uh, that's cool. But I hope it's doing well, I guess. I don't, you know, I, I, I hope that Trackmania is working out for them. This is their second year. I think, or no, I'm sorry, it's their fourth year. So people that bought a three-year, like, club subscription uh, would have had to renew sometime over the last uh, handful of months here. I did re-up for, uh, I believe, another three years. But I wonder what retention was like on that, how well it's doing for them. I mean, they, they did have to... Ugh. They did have to, um... They did make some changes, so the, the the full campaigns are no longer free. I think it's just the first ten levels of them are free now. And, uh... And the, the language in there is like, Hey, in order to keep this business running like a business, we need to make some changes. So that, that tells me that whatever model they had was maybe not doing great. So we got at least golds over here. What are my California times? Oh, I'm number one in the club. Number one up in the club. Let's uh, do some... Uh, oh, under 10 seconds. That's... I want ones that have uh, player limits on them because that means that they are running their own server as opposed to using the the Ubisoft's provided servers. <clears throat> I'm 
No. Not enough time. No one has custom music anymore, honestly. That's the... I think the biggest bummer about all of this is uh, none of these uh, player-run servers are serving up hot and fresh, hellish dubstep remixes the way they ought to be. You know, the in-game music is okay for what it is, but it's not... It's not what I need. Where am I going? Okay. That's that. Yeah. Ah! Nope. That's not the right way. I need to take that turn harder than that. Probably just play a little bit of track mania and then, then move on to something else, I guess. I don't know. I, you know, you never know with track mania. Trackmania is the type of game that can swallow up an evening if you let it. Ugh. I was doing a lot better when I had those other drivers right in front of me, uh, tipping, you know, tipping me off about the turns to come. At least we got a finish in. in business. No, we're not. We're out of business. We're out of business. And around. Okay, all right. That's a better time. Was this series ever a big hit? That's a good question. No. Yet, yeah, uh, not here? Not in the United States of A, but uh, you know, go to DreamHack. 
They'll tell you all about Trackmania Esports. A guy in trip pants listening to Happy Hardcore will tell you all about the joys of Trackmania. But yeah, Trackmania Nations was mad. I mean, there were always people playing it. It just, it just never. And he will have a really large hat on. He will not be the guy from Jamiroquai. He will be the guy that the guy from Jamiroquai stole his shit from. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think Trackmania rules. I think it's... It, yeah, I agree. It, it, Trackmania is a fantastic game. Live chat, you were right. But, um... I feel like, it, it, you know, as, as games go, especially a game that, like, you could classify as, like, popular in some regions of the world, like, I feel like it's... an acquired taste. Which I think uh, that you could say that about any video game, really. That's It's kind of a, a non... meaningful critique but um but you know it's it's a, just a, such a highly specific thing like there's nothing else quite like it a driving game with no collision and uh you know where it's just a bunch of players on a server up to like 200 in some cases just doing this trying to, to squeeze out the best time um, trying to improve upon their own time. It's just such a... There's real... Like I said, there's nothing like it. Like, if, if Trials had weird ghost multiplayer, then maybe that would be... something similar. But there's just... There's not really... Like, it's hard to find a point of comparison. For what this fucking weird thing is. And also, the way they built it and the way they built the infrastructure for you running your own server and some of the other stuff around that is so, like, crazy. Um, even in an era when, you know, more games had player-run servers... This was always a little weird. Um, always, you know, there's always just kind of a strange, like the, like the process of running a server, especially with all of these server plugins that you want to run for leaderboards and local server-based leaderboards and and everything like that. You end up like as part of the process you're like all right well we've got to install my sequel now because i need to run a fucking sequel database to store all these records in and okay we need to make sure that the server can talk to the sequels database and write the records there and do that like there's it's a process
Oh, I was not sure what to do there, but it was not that. Yeah, is it like Counter-Strike surf servers? It might be, because I, I... I don't know how to surf in Counter-Strike. I've tried it a couple of times over the years, but I've never... I've never been able to make it happen. It's like just some fundamental concept of that that I'm missing. But yes, I've, having watched some of that, I suppose I suppose there is like kind of some kind of weird shared DNA. Also, I, like probably some kind of weird shared DNA in the types of sickos uh, that are att attracted to either thing. Um, I'm lost. Oh God. Everything went weird, and I had no idea where I was going or why. We need to get on the ground. We're not going to make it. We made it. Oh. my house from here. We escaped. We're out here now. We're free. Did it again. All right, let's keep it together this time. Okay, good. Nailed it. Boom. But like Track Media came out on the it was on the DS. I want to say there was a game for the Wii as well. I want to say they did Track Media for the Wii, which is not weird. Which is also weird, but I get that. Uh, And the DS game is okay, too. It's just not, you know, like, when you go back to it now, I think if you come to it and have no idea what you're getting into other than just, like, all right, driving game, I think it is, like, there's a bit of a shock there. It's just, like, what the f what, it what the hell am I doing? Um, but going back to that game now with all of the, you know, years of experience of, you know, what this thing is, uh, it's a lot easier to wrap your mind around. Oh, oh, I, 
I needed to do that a lot faster than I did. And now here we are. Yeah, Trackmania Turbo felt like, yeah, it was their attempt to try to, like, you know, dress it up with our arcade kind of concepts and graphics and whatever else in, like, in a way that I think made sense. Um... All these club campaigns here, if you want to. Um, but yeah, let's. Uh, here. Where is it? What? What is an algorithm? What? All right. Uh, let's see. What's going to be the fastest way to do this? Integer scaling is cool until you're faced with this, and then you gotta go, oh shit, all right. That's my name. This is way too loud. And so it has an editor, it has local multiplayer, like it, it, in theory, you know, for a, it's like an offline You know, it is an offline Trackmania game, you know, um, which I think to me loses a lot of the, a lot of the point of why we're here. But like, you know, it's fully recognizable as that fucking game. I need to make some, I'm, I'm trying to make some adjustments to, to kind of just how this stuff looks to, you know, you want to use integer scaling because sometimes that can cause some shimmer, um, but I'm just not equipped to do that properly just yet. So, so in the meantime. Did this run at 60 on real hardware? I I don't know. Is it, yeah, is it the European version for achievements? That's I knew that it had. Um, I knew that one of them had it. Uh, yeah, I, I I don't I remember it running relatively smoothly on, smoothly on real hardware. Um, Did that work? Is that... Why did it... No achievements to display. Oh, did I launch Trackmania Turbo? There's your problem. They made two of them.
Okay, now that it's a little bigger on screen, maybe I will crash slightly less. You know, it's not, like, it's not 60 per se, but, uh, it is smooth. Oh, jeez. You are playing it with a D-pad, but honestly, like, most Trackmania players, I feel like until relatively recently, and I'm sure some of them still do, play it with a keyboard, so... It doesn't have my okay yeah it doesn't have my i i have played this game before and gotten a handful of achievements in it i just uh don't have the save anymore i guess look at that skybox moving look at those clouds moving in the sky that's actually kind of cool <laughs> But it's funny, like you, you know, you even recognize these blocks as like these these track pieces are still in modern track mania. They have been there all along. Long may they reign, you know. And it has a fuck ton of tracks in it, and. You know, if you're at all into the notion of the, like, time attack versus leaderboard AI or stuff, or if you're a person who has other people in your life that have a DS and have a copy of this game, then maybe that would have been cool. But, uh... What did the first Trackmania look like? I mean, it's on PC. Uh, was it... Just, did they just call it Trackmania, or was it like Trackmania Sunrise? I don't know. There's like the early Trackmania games. There was a bunch of them, and they I think they primarily just sold them from their website. Along with a, a sailing simulator that they had made. <laughs> race unless I uh, do better than that is that yeah Trackmania Na uh, Nations Forever is like them trying to combine all of the different Trackmania's disciplines into one product and then Trackmania 2 is kind of a, a different like they split it all apart again and sold it all separately and then eventually redid the Mania Planet interface in a way that can kind of unify it again but it it was it, it's weird. This is a process. I think that's the funniest thing to me is playing this game and seeing parts like track pieces that I've have been in track mania well before this way and well after it you know just like pieces of track that you're like oh yeah no that's that's all totally still in here 
It's kind of wild. So can I move on to... Oh, I guess there's the other... Yeah, I guess you have to do all of the disciplines, huh? I don't really want to do that. I only want to play stadium. I think stadium kind of became the de facto like standard track mania thing like because there was track mania nations and track mania nations or track mania nations forever and then there's track mania united forever and nations is the free version of united i think is what it is and so nations only has the stadium Um, only has the stadium uh, uh, tile set in it. And so because that was free, ev everyone just played stadium. And so everyone just made tracks for stadium. And so it just, even even the people that were paying for track mania, I feel like didn't go on servers that were not running stadium tracks. I, it's still not a tunnel. No matter how many times I look at that, and think that kind of looks like a tunnel. It's still not. You dumb dumb. You dope. You dingus. Yeah, there were just so many more people playing on the stadium tracks always, and, and that's still true. I think if you go back, because you can install old Tragmania still, and uh, that's free. Hey, if you yeah, you could still if you don't want to play modern Trackmania, you can go back a, a couple of generations to uh, Trackmania Nations for free, and it's uh. At the end of the day, it's all still this game. It's all still this game. Um, and then they did Trackmania Turbo, which I assume is just another one. <laughs> These, these look like exactly the same menus, just with a fresh uh, coat of paint on them. But the structure of this game seems completely identical. Like, other than the menus changing, it just feels like a track pack, probably. Is this fucking tracks on the rocks type shit here? Fucking goes off. <laughs> Give me this soundtrack in modern track mania. What are we doing? Where's the fucking French touch fucking track mania 2020 soundtrack pack? What the fuck is going on? What the hell? I'm. I would have. Is there a higher quality? No, I don't want a higher quality rip of this. The DS invented filter house because the DS is the filter. Yeah, it's just... Oh, this frame rate is uh, significantly worse. Ah. Only because I had the other three cars turned on. No, that this frame rate is... Uh, this is a little rough on the frame rate, let's say. <laughs> this track is too good. This music is too good. I'm like bummed at how good this is and it's in the DS version and <sighs> Where's the Trackmania Turbo DS soundtrack rips? It's fucking Silva Gunner on these high quality rips. Can we make these songs sound like the Flintstones? 
Yeah, sure. Same track. Fuck it. Fuck it. I'm in. If this was the, if this is the only song in this game, that's still okay by me. Oh God. Is this legit the only song in the game? Let's see if we get a better frame rate with no other cars on the track. Not really. Surround sound. Of course, it's the DS. We need surround sound. Is there music credits on this? Focus Home Interactive, of course. Oh, so this came out after Nadeo was purchased by Ubisoft, huh? 2010. Yeah, I guess I guess that did happen. Man. I guess the DS was a thing in 2010, huh? Do. Shout out to Do. Okay, Street Hawk, Tokyo Drift, the A Team, Wacky Races. What? You silly guys and girls and your crazy credits. Surely we can emulate the rumble pack. Uh, why don't we uh, fucking do some real bad stuff and run it at 10 times the internal resolution and um, and maybe that'll be the only thing we do here and uh, see just how just how good we can make this look good in quotes. Okay, we'll close and reopen just for maximum uh, reset here. Oh, are we not getting full speed because 10 times is too much? I would believe it. Well, stuttery. Well, stuttery. Okay, fair enough. I will. I can't even bring up the the menu to change it. It's too. Like it can't even. It's, the input is just so. I mean, this isn't, is this, this isn't rendering. Is this all CPU rendering? Is that part of the problem? Um, enable the OpenGL rasterizer for 3D. That's probably, that's probably something we need to do. I mean, let's turn all this shit on. 
not the nothing but the word hack in it if it isn't on already. That's that's usually. <clears throat> rendering it in software when we need to, you know, we need to the power of the Voodoo 2 here. No, no, that's not much better. But I didn't close it all the way. I need to just double check. Let's just double check to make sure that we're, we're doing a full restart, that it's going to do what it needs to do. Still a little, uh, still a, a little scratchy there. You can hear it struggling ever so slightly. But not nearly as bad as it was. I mean, no one, you shouldn't run it this way. You should run it like 5x. Still... Looks pretty good. I don't know. Looks a lot better than it did. So let's see what we got to take it down to in order to get it to, uh, let's try, uh, I mean, let's try 5X. Let's go to 32-bit color while we're at it. Uh, yeah, we want some, we want some AA. We want some 8X. A little texture smoothing, why not? Why not, man? Enable this depth, LA, polygon facing. Sure. <laughs> sure. If you're finding Trackmania Turbo soundtracks out there that have, like, BreakBot on them and stuff, it's because the console Trackmania game that was put out recently is also called Trackmania Turbo, which is confusing. Uh, that had a great soundtrack, including that fucking BreakBot track, which is, uh, great. Which is fantastic. Um... There's five, there's five songs in the DS version? All right. Yeah, I mean, it's still obviously bogging down here and there. Um, it's fu I mean, hey, it looks sharper. It's funny when you can do this. Emulators are funny to me. When you can do this weird shit and up res PlayStation and DS games and all this other nonsense. Um, but it seems like 5x is just a little too much. I gotta have to upgrade this uh, 4090. We have to throw it in the damn trash, and uh, whatever this uh, this uh, 5950x Pro CPU apparently is garbage. If we can't run Trackmania Turbo for the DS at 10 times upscaling, I mean, I suppose we could download the standalone version of this emulator, which you know may may run better. Um, That's interesting that it's not... Anyway. Um, I bet it'll run great at 3x. But we're not gonna... We're just gonna close it and forget about it. <laughs> for now. Um, let's see here. If this is the soundtrack for the DS game. No, that's the, this is the soundtrack for the uh, small rewarder linked to the, the soundtrack to, um, 
the console track media turbo in there, but, uh, but yeah, that's not turbo DS soundtrack. Front end music, coast music, island music, snow music, stadium music. That is indeed it. You know, if you like music that kind of sounds like a bad MP3, might I recommend ripping audio from a DS game? <laughs> What's the other music like? So we got snow music. <laughs> These are ripping guitars, man. This is like music that plays when you beat a Banjo-Kazooie game or something. It's like, you know, you're on a plane flying off into the sunset and Oh, the island music's not bad. Dew was cooking. How about the coast music? Yeah, French company making a driving game in, in the year 2010. The Those two tracks make perfect sense for this game. And it's some of the best like stock music that's been in a Trackmania game, period. As far as I can tell. Tetris CDI. I mean, no, don't, don't, do not fucking besmirch the Tetris CDI soundtrack in here. God damn it. We'll throw hands. Um, I'm so bummed, man. This, this CDI situation is such a bummer. I was so ready to start burning CDs and playing CDI games on this thing up here. And, um, it breaking like that after I hooked it all back up. Super bummed out. Super bummed out. But um, the uh, replacement belt that I ordered shipped. So hopefully it'll be here soon. And then I can really break the CDI by opening it up. That's what I'm really looking forward to is really fucking it up. Um, the ODE is not out yet, um, or rather, so there's no, I don't think there's a specific CDI ODE. Um, the maker of the 3DO ODE is making a generic ODE that can be, you know, kind of soldered into multiple systems. And there's a solder out on board uh, that will allow you to put it in a CDI. But none of that's available yet. It looks like the, he was doing betas and, and, you know, some people have access to it, but he's not selling it outright just yet. And also, I cannot solder. So that is something where I will have to then send my CDI to, uh, to someone. Um, and so that's why I feel okay buying this replacement belt. Because I know ultimately I'm going to have to send this CDI out anyway. And so if I get the replacement belt and I cannot fix it, well, it was already broken. So... 
Uh, so I can just get it all repaired at once by a, pro a damned professional and not my stupid ass. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I just don't trust, you know, like uh, there's a couple of things I think, you know, the color blindness and, and sometimes wires and colors and all that, like I, I just like electrician type stuff, any kind of electronics or electricity or anything like that. I'm always really, uh, I just don't trust myself with it, I guess. Um, and I don't know that my hands are that steady. Are they, they're fine. They're not, they're okay. They're not like, I'm not like a weird, like super, it's not like I got the tremors. Um, but I was never good at putting small stickers onto small things. Uh, and so that's, that's the, the guide I'm using as a judge. I'm just like, yeah, I don't know. I'm not really, not really, not really good at that stuff. Um, I don't even know what I would play, you know, if I had access to the full CDI library, I mean, which I kind of do here in front of me right now, even, I, I just don't even know what, what to play. There's this, if you haven't seen it, and it's not that interesting, ultimately, uh, there's Super Mario's Wacky Worlds, the unreleased Mario game, which is like kind of interesting to see if you haven't, but, um... Oh, did it not, did it, did that load properly or did that not load properly? For whatever reason, uh, I don't know, CDI games are not loading from the menu the way they should. I have to physically find the file and drag it into the window. Hang on. Uh, okay. This this Super Mario this this uh this Super Mario's Wacky World is like an interesting story or something, but it's not, you know, it's not really a full game, and so it's it's kind of, um, it's a little whatever. What is a CDI? What 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 is an algorithm? Is a, the CD interactive? The compact disc interactive system is a uh. 90s ass machine that played some video games and also some encyclopedias and uh, you know it's like a, it's a multimedia system um yeah there's an episode of game boys to men where we go over the the cdi and the 3do and, and a lot of that stuff there so this thing's barely a game it's just a prototype it's really just like here's the levels that they have in here and it's it's funny because when you think about when you think about the Nintendo games that shipped on the CDI like those Zelda games the idea of them taking Super Mario World ass music and sprites and making a new game out of it is actually crazy exciting by comparison you know um And the idea that Nova Logic apparently made this um, is also insane. Like, yeah, between Comanche games, yeah, we we knocked out some prototypes for a for a Mario CDI game. Um, but it's really just like a handful of unconnected areas, and you know, not real gameplay or anything like that. Like, we can just bump up against these guys. And I don't know if there's a way back to the menu without uh, resetting the entire game. So we'll we'll reset it and load up another level here real quick. But I think if this game had come out on CDI, it would be crazy, right? I mean, it would be like... If, if this had been a final product, if this had come along, it would have been a really wild... Like, I think the story about Nintendo games on CDI would be very different, right? It would be like this really weird, like, oh, there's there's this Mario World-esque game. Is it great? No, but it's like, it's interesting, you know? You, you, should, you should check it out, you know? That, that'd be, there'd be something there. Um, let's look at Swamp 1, I guess. I don't know. I guess no swimming in the game. 
Yeah, instead we got Hotel Mario, which, uh, you know, by comparison from the Zelda and Link games and stuff, Hotel Mario is, is fantastic. It's an amazing video game by comparison. Here, if you haven't seen Hotel Mario, I mean... It's at least a, recognizable as a video game. Let's see here. What do I think about Mario is missing? It's it's not great. I don't know. It's like maybe an interesting idea, I suppose, but. Your friends out of the fantasy factory. Uh. <laughs> nice of the princess to invite us over for a picnic, eh, Luigi? I hope she made lots of spaghetti. Luigi, look! It's from Bowser. Dear pesky plumbers, the Koopalings and I have taken over the Mushroom Kingdom. The princess is now a permanent guest at one of my seven Koopa hotels. I dare you to find her if you can. We gotta find the princess. And you gotta help us. If you need instructions on how to get through the hotels, check out the enclosed instruction book. I don't have my enclosed instruction book, I'm sorry. Looks kind of peaceful. Looks are deceiving when Koopas are involved. Um, CDI emulation is not where I wish it was. I wish it was significantly better than it is. Um, but it does run some things reasonably well, and that's nice. So that's which is why I was excited to get the real hardware hooked up and and all of that. But um, really great stereo audio here. Can I not jump? I don't think I can jump. That's you know why would Mario jump? I forget what you do in this game, though. You know, this is, uh, you know, th this is the same way when, when the Beatles started making stereo albums, you know, this is how it went, too. So, you know, it's, uh... Oh, you close the doors, right? That's, uh, yeah. Right. Is that the that's the thing, right? You can't name one game you would ever want to play on a CDI. I yeah, I get it. I mean It's a. It, I, I like it's it's fascinating, right? The CDI is a fascinating device, but I can't sit here and tell you like, oh, it's an incredible, you know. Oh, we're gonna run out of time. We're not gonna make it. Oh, that fucker opened a door down there.
think he goes past this elevator, right? So I can... Yeah, I mean, you know, why would you want Mario to jump? It, it's, you know... Like, it's a crutch, honestly. And so, in some ways, this is a pure video game. But I... There we go. Okay. Can I do this? Okay. I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't remember this game being as fucked as, as it seems right now, but okay. This changes everything. Uh, the buttons are not mapped the way they are on a real CDI controller, unfortunately. You know, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. The uh, the addition of jumping to our repertoire is not is not noticeably improving the game. But, you know, like, again, like compared to the other Nintendo games that came out on the CDI, this is like a revolution. This is, I mean, compared to most games on the CDI, this thing is revolutionary. When you push the direction on the stick, it goes in that direction. Also, I think it just crashed. It's the problem with CDI emulation is that uh, it actually got some, like, relatively recently over the last year or so, the, the uh, MAME support for CDI improved dramatically. And, um, and, and that's fantastic, but, um, but it's still not where it needs to be. Also, it doesn't emulate the, the MPEG add-on card, which made for more FMV. Uh, so unfortunately there's just a lot of things that don't run on it at all. Um, like the... 1994 CDI awards. We'll just pop up this error message, which we'll see in a little bit here. Um, are there any good CDI games? Some people swear by burn cycle. Um, the Seventh Guest came out on CDI, and some people like that as well, um, but... But yeah, it's not... Uh... Did Hell come... I don't believe Hell came out for... The... I could be wrong. Let's look. No, Hell did not come out for the, the CDI. I think that was only on PC. Um... The Apprentice is good. All right, friend, let's try. Let's load up The Apprentice. I'm not, I'm not familiar with it. I don't. And yeah, uh, Tetris for CDI is fine. It's Tetris. How did Nintendo make a deal with Philips to put Mario on this thing? So it's a, it's a series of broken contracts as a result of Nintendo's desire and then lack of desire to have CD-based games on a system. Um, it's originally the Sony deal that led to the prototype PlayStation. And then in the middle of all that, Nintendo signed another deal with Philips and broke the Sony deal. And then broke the Philips deal and on break... Part of that deal was that Philips got the rights to use Nintendo's characters in X number of games. 
Um, and so on the break of that deal, Phillips still had the rights to do that. And so they did that. And so that's how we ended up with these games on this platform. Like they're an embarrassment in a lot of ways, right? I mean, they're not, you know, Nintendo didn't make them. Nintendo didn't really have a level of oversight over them. And part of it is a result of Nintendo watching the marketplace and watching what was happening with the Sega CD over time and because they they dragged their feet so much they got kind of got to watch the entire path of the sega cd and kind of into the saturn era even a little bit um and see that cd technology was not resulting in the types of games that nintendo wanted to make and so they looked at all this shit and all this fmv stuff coming out and they were just like nah okay actually we thought we wanted a CD drive on our on our platform. We can do without it. We'll be fine without it. We don't fucking need it. And so they bailed on it and went with the N64 kind of as is. And then the knock-on results of that. Or you have Square, who was signed up to make SNES CD games back in the day. Um, Square seeing the value of CD technology and saying, well, fuck it. I guess we'll do... Final Fantasy over here instead. And so they bring Final Fantasy 7 to the PlayStation instead of the N64. And um, I don't think that that single move is what changed the course of hit. You know, like the PlayStation was, was a, a much better, bigger system than the Sega CD or the Saturn. Um... But it was a big deal. Gandorf. You spend the day reading up on a new magical topic. Like this type of music just kicking on out of nowhere and then kicking off just as dramatically sums up this oh geez, this era of CD based gaming, right? It's just like Oh, I can shoot. Listen to the sound effects on that shot, man. It's I guess one of the other things to remember is that this... Well, no, the CDI did have stereo. This this CDI I have over here does have stereo output. Um, but I guess, I, yeah, the, the audio mix being music on the left, F effects on the right is such a strange... Oops. This game looks... This game has to exist on the Amiga, right? Like, this has to be a port of an Amiga game. They didn't just make this for CDI. They, it is just for the CDI? That's crazy. Great. This is just a modern day Kid Icarus, ultimately, you know?
yeah, I, I would have thought that this this game had to have existed for the CD32 or, you know, some CD TV, maybe even some form of twisted Amiga apparatus. Listen to the fidelity of that door being opened, though. Games don't sound like this, you know? And those are not spikes on the ground. Every time I look at them, I go like, oh god, they're spikes. All right, take it back. This is the best game on CDI. This is the most game. That's not going to work. All right. Uh. Not a good it's not good. But it's bet oh that was there was a fire thing there, huh? Is that our last life? Well yeah, this era of C D game um of like these menus come up, and then a half second later, when the CD is done seeking, it starts playing this overly dramatic Red Book audio, like, you know, CD track, and you're just like, ugh. Hey. Man, I'm not even better than Rick. I'm not going to enter a nudality code. I just, I'm just, I'm just not, just not going to. emulator doesn't know what to do when you like quit out to a game. I don't think it, it knows to quit to the menu. Um, but like the CDI is home to a lot of, well, I don't know if it'll run this stuff or not. We'll find out. Um, you know, it had its much like the, the hollow lens. It's the hollow lens of its day because it was marketed as, uh, you know, something of a game machine with some multimedia capabilities and some other applications but uh, ultimately found its home as an enterprise device. Uh, the CDI had a similar path um, where it lasted for years and years and years past its lifespan as uh, 
uh, something used in some cases by businesses, some cases in, in car dealerships and some of this other stuff. Some of these, a lot of these will require that digital video cartridge add on, unfortunately. And so I don't know that we'll be able to actually run them. Um, but I'm going to try because I'm not a hundred percent sure which ones do and which ones don't. Um, this seems to be a white screen, so we're going to. Let's see, how about the, the French, uh, this, this French market Yamaha disc perhaps. Yes, the Yamaha Show brochure for 1996. Uh, let's see some films. The Power to Satisfy. Oh! Is there a way to go back? Doesn't look like it. Or if there is, it's not. Let's try and, uh. Hmm. All right, let's reset it. And we just, we won't pick the films section. Yeah, so the, the emulation of the CDI is, is sadly incomplete. Um. I'd love to be able to to just emulate all this stuff and not have to dick around with real hardware, especially because the real hardware is like a, a little bit frail. Um, the the I mean, all belts on all CD drives eventually wear out, right? But uh, I guess the the belt on this one is notorious for for wearing out in the exact way that it did on me, which uh, you know, hey, I had a good run, I guess. Um. Also, you can use a mouse for stuff like this, I think, but it's, it's not, I don't have it mapped, so we'll use the, we'll use the controller. Uh, La Boutique Yamaha. Uh, yeah, we want the fashion line. So now I want I want everyone to take back all of the bad things they said about the CDI today. You know? I want you to think about what we're looking at here. This team Yamaha umbrella. This team Yamaha fanny pack for example. Oh, could you imagine? What do I, I got to call them? What do I dial three, six, one, five? That's a helmet. That's another helmet. Here's a helmet. That's a helmet. Here are some helmets. That's a helmet. Pretty sure this is a, well, I don't know. These. This is an unprecedented number of helmets. These are cool helmets. I mean, these are good looking helmets. What do you want me to say? These, look, look at these helmets. And a lot of, uh, let's see what else, uh, if there's anything else worth trying to look at here. Um, okay, here's, we'll, we'll try to run this one and we'll see what it does.
and then maybe we'll stop playing CDI stuff for a little bit. But the Volvo C70. Mm -hmm. There we go. I was like, is this even going to boot to the UI, the the front end, or what do we got? There are a ton of Volvo discs out there. Ah. Oh. It's display, it displayed the Volvo logo for a second and then went to this white screen. Is it going to do anything or is it just broken? But these are supposed to be the features of the 2000 or, or of it says Volvo C70 features 2000. And this was a disc issued in the Netherlands. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm probably, uh, probably not going to run. Unfortunately. Let's see if some of these other, let's just try a couple of Volvo discs here and see if we can get anything out of it. The Volvo 850 color and upholstery for 1996. This disc was issued in Europe. Play. Oh, ah. And I see my hope because the, the, the unit I have does have a, 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 the digital video cartridge installed. My hope was like, well, I'm going to, uh, you know, burn these to CD. I bought a stack of blank discs, which you can get 50 blank CDs for like 11 bucks. Now you get a spindle, $11. It's nuts. <laughs> seems, that seems very affordable. I thought that they would be like extra expensive as like a boutique item. Like, oh, you want blank CDs in 2024? Fuck, man. $3 a blank. Um, But yeah, you know, it's, it's, it takes, uh, you know, the, it, it's all hobbyist developers doing this stuff. Someone would have to take an interest in emulating the DVC and making it happen. And it's an MPEG add-on card, which is kind of weird. You know, um, but like I said, the, the MAME emulation, this is based on the MAME emulation, uh, here, this, the, what we're running here. Um, but, um. Last year sometime, there was a, a pretty big improvement to CDI emulation in MAME, and my hope is that, you know, that someone is still out there working on it, chipping away at the uh, virtual Wink Martindale. Thank you, Charlie O'Donnell, and welcome to the Joker's Wild. If you know the rules, select the number of players. For game rules, select help. I want to see if these Up are interactive. Four people can play, answering multiple choice questions okay. to earn dollars. I was hoping there would be You'll some video four possible of the rules. Each, question. each game has five categories. The first round ends after one player reaches $500. The winner of the second round goes on to the Joker Challenge. Okay. Okay, go ahead and select the name. Just like any good sports game, they knew to have some nicknames in here. To see more names, select the letter again until you see a name you want. Then highlight and select it. To see more names, select the letter again until you see a name you want. Then highlight and select it. Jeff? The categories Shit. for this game are funny stuff. I love funny stuff. Music. I hate music. Famous folks. Eh, I'm into some famous folks. The 90s. Eh. Arts and letters. I like letters, but not so much arts. Remember, a single category is worth $50. A double is $100. A natural triple is worth $300. Mm -hmm. The Joker is wild and can be used as any category. Jeff? Go ahead and spin. 
Music. Arts and Letters. Joker. Joker. The or off the board to play Joker, then hit an action button. Let's do music. The the this the input on here is real bad. Your question is, they were hot, they were sexy, they were rockers. How could they miss? This all-female rock band became stars Keep it together. with their 1981 album, Beauty and the Beat. Is it the Go-Go's? Wilson Phillips, the Violent Femmes, the Go-Go's, the New York Dolls. That's right, for $100. Let's check the score. Good. The score Nailing is one hundred dollars. Jeff, go ahead and spin. Famous folks. Joker. Joker. Music. Let's do music again. Come on, I'm pushing to the right over and over again. And don't Listen carefully. The joke, yeah. A Broadway musical heralded the hippie movement of the 1960s with songs like Good Morning Starshine and Aquarius. This merry musical was... Hair. Hi there. Jesus Christ Superstar. Hair. O Calcutta. That's right, for $100. The score now reads, you have $200. Jeff, uh, go ahead and spin. <laughs> the noise is so bad. The 90s. Famous folks. Famous folks. Ah, uh, they did record him saying fam like the categories multiple times for when it comes up. I was wondering if they... You know, famous folks is going to be worth more money here since there's two of them. Listen carefully. Okay. This American author created such enduring characters as Colonel Pynchon, Miriam Schaefer. Oh, I don't know and this. And the Reverend Arthur Dimsdale. Who was this man of letters? James Fenimore Cooper, Nathaniel Hawthorne, William Faulkner, Edgar Allan Poe. Ten seconds to it's a quick Google away, ultimately, but uh, people in chat are saying Hawthorne. Correct. Or? Colonel Pension is a character in the House of the Seven Gables. Miriam the, Schaefer like the, is in the You're up against the clock. Maybe on real hardware, hardware the it's it's not as unresponsive or something weird like that. But it's crazy. Let's take a look at the score. Your total is three hundred. How bad these this navigation feels. Jeff, hmm. go ahead and spin. Music. Yep. Joker. Joker. Arts and letters. I'm pushing to the right over and over again. Let's try arts and letters. For $100. Hawaiian is a very flowery and efficient language. Wow. I, How many mm. letters make up the alphabet in that island language? 18, 12, 20, 6. They called it efficient, so I'm going to guess that it's lower than 20. You have 10 seconds to answer. No, that's not it. You should have chosen 12. 12. Looking at the numbers, your total is $300. Jeff, huh? go ahead and spin. The 90s. Mm-hmm. Joker. Joker! Funny stuff. I do like funny stuff. But I also like the 90s. Come on. Come on. Get over there. Come on. There we go. For 
Someone called this funny man one of the official satirists of a world that badly needs a hot needle in the posterior. A what? His work with Get Smart, The Producers, and mm-hmm. Blazing Saddles, yeah. to name a few, make you remember Mel Brooks, Woody Allen, Zero Mustel, Come on, Buck get Henry. up there. That's right, for $100. Brooks' company also made some very serious movies. Really? Including Francis and the giant hit The Elephant Man. Oh, Check Thanks, in Wink. Score. Your score is $400. Wink just knew that. That wasn't part of the script. He just was like, you know. Uh, Jeff, huh? go ahead and spin. Joker. Funny stuff. Arts and letters. We're going to try to go with funny stuff here. There we go. Listen carefully. He was the first not ready for primetime player to think he was indeed ready. He ditched Saturday Night Live to star in Foul Play with Goldie Hawn. He's. I assume that's Chevy Chase. Chevy he Chase, was the first to leave. Bill Murray. Right. Dan Aykroyd. John Belushi. Like, I don't remember the movie. That's right. But... You've reached $500. That ends the first round. Your score is $500. Okay, let's play the second round. Look at him. Now, round two is played a bit differently. On the wheels are dollar amounts and devils. <gasps> you choose your own category to use exclusively throughout the round. Your goal is to accumulate money and avoid yeah, the is... devil at all costs. All right, Adam Cole is if here. If you win Got the it. second round, you go on to the Joker Challenge. Oh. Jeff? Yeah. Which category do you want for the second round? I want to do the 90s. Come on, get over there. Jeff? Huh? All right, let's not see that devil. Spin. 200. Yeah. 300. Yeah. 400. Here's your question. In the 1990s, this artist gained even greater notoriety when he erected thousands of yellow and blue umbrellas in California and Japan. What? Previously, he had wrapped islands in cloth. Yeah, I bet. Who was he? Who was he? Tim Miller, Mephisto, Andy Warhol. Doesn't seem like Andy Warhol kind of thing. You got it. Multiple people saying Christo. He also built a gigantic fence across (laughs) Northern California. He built the wall. Thank you, Christo. Jeff? Okay, let's play on. Go ahead and spin. Watch out for that devil. 50. Hmm. 100. 250. Here's your question. In the 1990s, it was hard to find a more popular TV show than The Simpsons. Which it's weird because this came out the in the 90s. The so, the like, the, the, the way he's talking about the 90s is... If... Mary, Homer, Maggie, Marge. Get up there. You have 10 seconds to answer. That's right. Homer's the dad, Marge is the mom, uh-huh. Maggie's the baby. Really? The other kids are Lisa, and of course, my gosh, let's not forget Bart. Whoa, wink. Jeff? Cross your fingers. Spin again. No devils. This would be good to have an audio rip of all of this stuff. 100. 250. 350. I just want the all three Here of the Joker. Because I'm, I'm sure he read Joker three times. Joker, 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 Prince Joker. Prince Joker. Yeah. was poised to reclaim the throne he lost in a military coup in 1970. Word, word. Of which country... Was Sihanouk Prince, Vietnam, Cambodia, England, Laos. We're going Cambodia. That's it. Jeff, you'll win the game now if you hold, or you can spin again and try to build up your total. But a devil would wipe out your win. 75, 175, 275, 
Here's your question. During the 1990s, Neil Bush, the son of President George Bush, uh -huh. was criticized for his role in the collapse of one of Colorado's largest savings and loans. Do you think that's based on what Wink Martindale's actual Neil hand? Bush's bank? Colorado Savings, Coronado Savings, Silverado Savings, Alvarado Savings. Someone's going to need to look this up. You have 10 seconds to answer. I mean, I guess it could be me. Silverado Savings. That's right. Neil Bush was not accused of breaking the law, but was publicly chastised for paying too little attention to the bank's loans. Jeff? Huh? Hold or spin? It's your decision. Let's hold now. Push to the right. That means you are the winner. That means you've earned the right to enter the Joker Challenge. Now, here's your Joker Challenge question. And don't forget the Joker! You're sending a letter to Fred Flintstone in Bedrock. Huh. What address do you chisel into the envelope? 39 Stone Canyon Way, 28 Rock Hudson Avenue, 12 Pebble Beach Road. 33 Hard Rock Way. I'm guessing it's Stone Canyon Way, but. Uh, 345 Cave Stone Road. Okay, no, the, there's multiple addresses. 1313 Cobblestone Way, 222 Rocky Way. Basically, like, none of the. Like, none of the ones that are... Three forty five Cavestone Road, thirteen thirteen Cobblestone Way, two 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 Rocky Way are all mentioned there, but like none of those match. Uh, 55 Cobblestone Road. Like, there's just a, a... And I guess there are a bunch of real-world places that call themselves the Flintstone House, which doesn't help. Three, four, two Gravel Pit Terrace. Yeah, we're going to go with Stone Canyon Way. That seems to be what everyone in chat is saying. But seconds I, to answer. You bet. But By I, the way, I have a question. Why are you writing Fred a letter anyway? Hey, fuck you. Congratulations. You not only won the game, but you also answered the Joker Challenge question. Great game. Let's take a look at the top scores. Here are the Joker's Wild high scores. All right, thanks for playing. I'm Wink Martindale, and we'll see you the next time you play The Joker's Wild. If you know the rules, select the I just wanted him to say Joker, rules, Joker, Joker, count. the way that they do. Also, the end game of this didn't have the dragon. Or no, I'm sorry, that's Tic-Tac-Doe. What the fuck is wrong with me? Over here thinking of Tic-Tac-Doe. Tic-Tac-Doe, that, that dragon was cool as hell. But I used to, I don't know, I used to watch a lot of Joker's Wild and a lot of Tic-Tac-Toe. There's also a Joker's Wild Jr. Which I assume is going to be completely identical except the questions will be easier. Oh, is it Mark Summers for Joker's Wild Jr.? Great. All right, let's take a look.
Whoa. Oh, this has a ripping guitar for kids. Lady Luck is clean. It's the Joker's Wild Junior. And here's your host, Mark Summers. Thank you, Charlie O'Donnell, and welcome to the Joker's Wild Junior. If Not, you know he doesn't rules, have to wear a suit because this is for the kids. Number of players. For game rules, select help. But well, yay! Look, Mark Summers did a lot, right? Mark Summers, uh, you know, was the the face of Nickelodeon. Uh, but he's no fucking Wink Martindale. Okay, go ahead and select a name. I wonder if they have different nicknames or if they just had him record. Yeah, those are all the same. To see more names, press that letter again. To see more names, press that letter again. Jeff? Huh. The categories for this game are... Mishmash. Great jobs. Great job. All wet. Dictionary. Disney. Remember, a single category is worth $50. A double is $100. A natural triple is worth $300. The Joker is wild and can be used like as a any triple. category. Jeff, huh. go ahead and spin. All wet. Joker. Mishmash. Highlight the category you want or off the board to play jokers. Then hit an action button. Action button is a really relative concept on the CDI. Here's your question. The third largest ocean in the world is bounded by Antarctica to the south, Africa to the west, and Australia oh, and Indonesia to the east. It is the... Antarctica, so is that the... Atlantic Ocean. Pacific Ocean. Indian Ocean, isn't it? Apache Ocean. Indian Ocean. Absolutely right. The Indian Ocean is just south of the country of India. Oh. Of course. Let's oh. look at the numbers. Jeff, huh. your score is $100. Jeff, huh. go ahead. It's and way spin. more cut off on this one. Mark Summers. Dictionary, Joker, all wet. Your question is, people used to write with ink pens made from the tail feathers of a large bird. Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin wrote with such old-fashioned pens. They're called quill pens. There, it'd be a quill. Pink pens. It's a quill, right? It'd be a Fountain quill. pens. Ballpoint pens. Big pens. You only have 10 seconds. To... Yes. Looking at the numbers, Jeff, huh. you have $200. Jeff, go ahead and spin. It's really unsettling. He barks it out. It's real staccato. Great just jobs. Get... Joker. <gasps> Great jobs! Yes! It's not a natural triple, but, uh... Here it is. He's no longer on TV very much, but when he was, Walter Cronkite was on almost every evening. Mm -hmm. He was a well-known and respected... Pornographer. Newscaster. Gangster. Gang he's gangster. Soap opera actor. G G cartoon G character. Gangster. gangster. You only have 10 seconds. To win. That's right, for $200. Walter Cronkite did the CBS Evening News until he retired in 1981, and that's the way it is. Looking Not at great, score, Mark Summers. Not great. Jeff, your score is $400. I appreciate it. I appreciate the Walter Cronkite impression. Not Jeff, great. go ahead and spin. Jeff. 
Joker. Mishmash. <sighs> Great jobs. Great jobs. Move to the right, you piece of garbage. For a hundred dollars. This TV star played the very expensive, equally hokey Steve Austin, alias the Six Million Dollar Man. Mm -hmm. This human superhero actor was... Lee Majors. Lou Ferrigno. Hulk Hogan. You got it. You've reached the $500 level. You have $500. Okay, let's play the second yeah. round. Now, round two is a little different. On the wheels are dollar amounts and dragons. You choose a category See, dragons. for See? yourself dragons. throughout the round. Your goal is to add to your money without getting a dragon. If you win the second round, you go on to the Joker Challenge. Jeff, huh. which category do you want for the second round? Oh, I don't know. Let's do mishmash. Get a variety in there. Jeff? Huh. All right, let's not see that dragon. Spin. 150. 225. 275. Here it is. Sand that is so soaked with water that it acts like a gooey liquid mm -hmm. and can suck you in and drown you. Tell is me about this sucking and goo. and what, what, what are we? Wet sand. Yeah, wet Liquid sand. sand. Quick sand. Swamp sand. Yes. Let me get my wet sand. Jeff, <laughs> cross your fingers, spin again. No dragons. 75. 150. 350. Here it is. As far as we know, there are no fish that can't swim but can fly. Uh -huh. But there is one bird that can't fly but can swim. That oh, swimming non-flying bird is a... It's a penguin. Parrot. Partridge. Pelican. Penguin. Yes! Yes! Oh. Jeff? Okay, let's play on. Go ahead and spin. Watch out for that dragon. 100, mm -hmm. 200, 400. Whoa, he's psyched. Here we go. These flowers come in other colors, but red is the most common. What are these flowers that Holland is famous for raising? Daisies, tulips, carnations, daffodils. <laughs> Correct. Jeff, uh. you'll win the game now. If you hold, or you can spin again and try to build up your high score total, but a dragon could wipe out your win. We're spinning. 150, 225. Mm -hmm. Ow, a dragon. That's it for you this time, and you lose your second round winnings. <laughs> Good God, man! That dragon burned the game Too bad down. Didn't make it this time, but we look forward to seeing you try it again on the Joker's Wild Junior. Here are the Joker's Wild Junior high scores. All right, thanks for playing. I'm Mark Summers, and we'll see you the next time you play the Joker's Wild Junior. If you know the rules, select the number of players. For game rules, I don't get to. Yeah, I can't play. Help. I'm dead. I got burned alive by a dragon, Liu Kang style. He burned up my money and took me with it. Do I think that there will be a next time that I will play the Joker's Wild Junior? I yeah. I mean, inevitably, this will all happen again, right? Once every few years, you go ah the CDI, and then find yourself. Uh. Returning to the scene of the crime. Is this going to be a... Th is this going to run? I'm guessing this won't run. This has to be a, a digital video disc, but... Joker! Joker! But that was like the, the big thing about the Joker's Wild was when you got three Jokers, like he would get more excited 
every time you got a Joker. And so by the end of it, Wink Martindale was fucking losing it. Joker! And everyone was losing their mind because he got so much money. We didn't even get, we got no, we got barely any Jokers, I feel like. We got ripped off. Unfortunately, Kathy Smith, personal trainer, does require a DVC, so. Darn. Um... You know, we got some Italian karaoke collections. Maybe those would work. Yeah, the big rollerball controller. That thing was crazy. I mean, it'd be like, yeah, you, you would use a mouse for this as well as a regular controller. The controller I have is just a, it's a Gravis gamepad, but it's gray. It's, it's, it's like kind of cool, but... It has a switch on it because everything kind of emulates a mouse. And so that's why this pointer moves so slowly. And there's a switch on the gamepad that's labeled fast or slow. This is fast, by the way. If you want it to move slower, you can turn the sensitivity. It's because it's basically like a, a gamepad that's emulating a mouse on, on some sick level. Like the input is disgusting on the CDI. <laughs> Uh huh. Primendo lo stresso testo, la musica viene interata, provate così la vostra abilità di cantanti. Of course. Viva la mama is what we're going with. Oh, did it just break? Come on. Unfortunately, it looks like we're not going to get any Viva La Mama. Bummer. Yeah, I mean, that's all the more reason that I need to fix this CDI. That this, this CDI I have sitting here with me needs to work because we need to be able to listen to Viva La Mama uh, whenever possible. Sad state of affairs. Really. Let's try like one or two more things here and see. There are like a dozen volumes of the Italian karaoke series also like it's imagine if a console today every time you put it in a disc it played that entire animation and how fucking dope that would be Hi, I'm Eliza James. Hi. Hi, I'm Charlie Green. Hey. Welcome to the Health Kick Edition. We're all trying real hard to turn over a new leaf and get fit. Uh huh. Yes, sir. So, if you want to join our regime, and I'm warning you, it's pretty strict around here, get a load of our features. But don't dawdle, run. And if you want to come back to this page, kiss one of these. There. Easy. Get moving. Oh, I love FMV that like is like a that girl, Sega CD. A race, 
an enigmatic young man, and an ending which no one can predict, except you. It's frightening, I know, but what you look like on Saturday night could depend on what you had for lunch on Tuesday. We investigate the mysterious links between diet and complexion and give you the facts that matter. Even if you don't quite get round to being fit all the time, our sporty look will help you convince people that you are. Try out new styles and new faces any time you like in the Face Factory. Face Factory. Okay, welcome to Face Factory. This is your chance to design a face and then give that face a complete makeover. You can build any kind of face you want and then see what kind of makeup looks good or bad on the face you created. First off, we'll sort out the general shape of the eyes, nose, or lips, the basic features that you want. Then when you've got the basics, you can refine each feature in turn until it looks exactly how you want it. Now, if it all sounds kind of complicated, don't worry, because I'll be there to help you out all the way, okay? And when you've finished your masterpiece, Why you can did get Charlie to show you different makeup styles on that very same face that you designed. Or These turns you are can incredible. create new styles yourself. You can do anything you like. So let's get going. First off, what kind of shape is the face you want? Is it oval, round, long, square, or heart-shaped? Square. Now, what sort of eyes do you want? Choose between sleek, those are large, deep-set eyes, stunning eyes, which are large and prominent. You could have slinky, which are prominent but smaller, or modest eyes, which are small and deep-set. Slinky. Okay, how about the eyebrows? You could have fine, which are very light eyebrows, full, which are thick and lush, or slender, which are somewhere in between. What kind of nose would you like? Super. There's a delicate nose, which is long and slender, a dinky nose, which is small, a cute nose, slinky that's and small, dinky, but a little broader, or there's a super nose. Just that little bit larger, little bit broader than the rest. Mmm. And to finish mm. off, how about the lips? Delicious lips are quite wide and thick. Elegant or wide, but slimmer. I Counting like them lips delicious. Are thick, but not so wide. And petite lips are, well, petite. Oh. Okay, we've taken your choices and stuck them together. What? But if this face doesn't quite look like what you had in mind, it's not don't a square. Panic. Because we're not finished yet. What you gotta do now is simple. Move the lips and kiss a feature. Each time you select a feature like this, it'll change. Keep on experimenting till you get the kind of face you want. Try it, and you'll soon see what I mean. Then, when you're happy, kiss the lipstick and we'll move on to the makeovers. Just kiss and make up. Okay, you've designed a face okay. kind of thing. Now you've got a choice. Whoa. You can ask Charlie to put a new style of makeup on the face you've made. Just choose the style you want. She'll reveal all the techniques you need to get that look. Or you can break out on your own. Create new styles, new looks. Go wild with makeup. You decide. Well, I want to see what Charlie has to say. I've got four styles of makeup for you to try. Okay. Natural, sporty, glamorous, and wild. Here's Charlie. Here's Charlie. 
For this wild look, you need quite a pale skin tone. So use quite an opaque foundation and some powder on the top to mat the skin down. Pale and interesting is the key here. So use a little bit of blusher, not very much at all. Just uh -huh. a little bit on the cheeks, just under the eyes. And the eye makeup is quite definite. So you start with the eye. AI was making people back in the 90s. With an eyebrow brush and some dark eyeshadow, making the eyebrows really strong. And on the eyes, using a lilac -y purple, very, very pale. And that goes over the whole eyelid and up and under the eyebrow. Smudge that on with a soft brush. There's none of this color under the eye. And there's a line of black eyeliner using a really fine brush along the top of the lashes. And that goes all the way from the inner corner to the outside and lifts up slightly. And that makes the eyes look uh -huh. wider. Okay. And then lots of black mascara on the top. Lots. And then take some false eyelashes and cut the end off so there's about two or three clumps of hairs and glue those at the outer edge of the eye. That just makes your eyelashes look even longer. And for the lips, use a really deep plum. Seems shade. like a lot of work. A layer, then blot it with a tissue and apply a second layer, and you'll get a really deep stain. Society color. is fucking weird, man. And that's the basic look. I can show you how to adapt this style for a daytime look or for a party. Or do you want to check out one of my other styles? I want to adapt this for a party. To get a party look, add a shimmering lilac to the eyes with a dark purple in the socket crease and all the way along under the lower lid. More mascara on the bottom lashes mm -hmm. and a whole false eyelash on the top. Then use a burgundy lipstick with gloss to make it shine. Sporty! Hey Charlie, show them what you got. Show them what you got. Show, show, show them what you got. Look. Doesn't want to have a lot of thick foundation, so you want a nice clean skin tone because a healthy glow is actually what this sporty looks all about. And emphasize that with some blusher. And we're using a very soft rosy red shade, quite like the real color of sort of flushed skin. Mm -hmm. We're not using eye makeup here, but we are using mascara on the top lashes only. And this is to define the eyes and make them look larger and more wide awake. And very important thing on this look is eyebrows. Because if you're not wearing a lot of eye makeup, emphasizing your eyebrows actually helps to bring a frame to your eyes. And mm -hmm. I'm using dark brown eyeshadow. And for the lips. Face factory. A girl. A it was the end of term, but it felt like the end of my life. I'd been dreading school sports day because I'd been entered for the obstacle race. Mm -hmm. The obstacle race at the my obstacle age. Race. Oh. My friend's brother was coming to watch. I didn't think I could bear the humiliation of him seeing me fail. I remember the first time I met him. Hi, Anton. This is my best friend, Kelly. Is this a visual well, novel? Hi, Kelly. I've heard a lot about you. He's gorgeous. I started trying to impress him, to show him how brilliant I am at everything. For a while it worked. Um, what are you doing? Writing. It's a short story from my English class. Can I read it when you're finished? I'd really like to. What do you say? Choose mm. one of these. Okay. No, 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 it's too embarrassing. I'll show you mine if you show me yours. <laughs> <laughs> so what do I get in return? Oh, I see. All right. That's, that's, uh, yeah. Well, uh... Yeah, he was impressed, all right. Impressed nice enough to come into his buckle. sister's room to chat whenever I went over to their house. Impressed enough to keep bumping into me wherever I went. Oh, hi, Kelly. I didn't expect to see you here. This is the fourth time Anton has accidentally bumped into you. Mm -hmm. What do you say? Hi, Anton. Really, Anton? What a coincidence, huh? Didn't you? 
No, it's weird, isn't it? The way we keep bumping into each other. But he wasn't impressed enough to tell raven-haired temptress Stacy Watts to leave him alone. Oh, this raven-haired temptress. Hear? Jealous? You want to punch Stacy's lights out? You think he won't be hers for long? You think, oh well, a boy is a boy is a boy. You're his sister, Sharon. What shall I do? Well, I know he's scared of pushy girls, but I don't know what you see in him anyway, Kelly. He's such a dork. But I never thought so. Now we're hiding in and the bushes outside his house with a knife. Hiding. No one's noticed that I've gone. I think I can sneak off now. The race has probably started without me. Yeah, I can definitely go. Kelly Redding, is that you lurking amongst the trees? We all wondered where you'd got to. Oh no, what do you do now? Try and hide behind a tall tree? Reply, yes, it's me, and come out with your hands up. Try to persuade her you were a dog? You'd have already persuaded yourself that running in the obstacle race isn't such a bad thing, and jog out, raring to go. Now come along, we don't want to miss the obstacle race, do we? You're just in time. You're lined up, ready to go. What do you say to Sharon? Good luck. What does Stacy think she looks like? I feel sick. At least I'll beat Hester. Hester always comes last. It's just, uh... And look, there's Anton. What are you thinking? Choose one of these. I wish Anton was looking at me. I wish I was out of here. Mm-hmm. I wish I wasn't so nervous. I wish the ground would open up and swallow me. Well, let's, I don't know. He's only here to see her, not me. I should have known. Kill her. You're off. You're in third place. Kill what are her. You thinking now? At least I'm not going to come last. Stacy Watt's bum looks quite fat from this angle. Tell me more. What are we supposed to do with the hoops again? This race is the end of my sports career. Maybe I'll come into my own here. Maybe crawling under nets will prove to be my forte. Yeah. I can't believe Hester's beaten me. I've oh come no. Lost. I'm so embarrassed. Oh no. Out of the corner of your eye, you see Anton running up behind you. But how does your story end? Well, that depends on how you answered the questions. You're competitive, <gasps> cheeky, and daring. You've got a sarcastic streak which you might have to curb, but you're always fun to be with. If you want something, you won't stop till you get it. To see how your story ends, kiss the arrow. Here we go. Mm. Kelly! Kelly! What do you want? I got you so wrong, Kelly. I thought you were so competitive that you always have to come first, whatever you do. And now you know I'm just a failure. Well, of course not. You obviously weren't trying, were you? You could have won if you wanted to. You let Stacy win because you knew she really wanted to. See, I didn't know you were yes. so generous and... Yes. I thought... That's right. Super generous. Maybe Starting a relationship too. completely based on a lie. Maybe I should have told him I was trying as hard as I could. Oh, yeah. Girls like Stacy, you've got to help them out sometimes. Oh, Kelly. But then, maybe I did do the right thing. Yeah! All right. Well, I, the CDI is amazing. Um,
Oh, I didn't realize that there was a whole other thing here. Are you really wild? What does your date think about you? Is he in awe of your wildness? Hmm. Or are you just his tame little bunny? Whoa. Well, our quiz won't take any prisoners. Pouting's fun. It's good to pout. And Charlie can show you how to do it best. Demand attention! Look wild! Hunt boys wreak havoc! Who is this for? I, what the age group of like who has a CDI? Like this is just like the, the number of like intersecting things that have to happen for this to reach its target audience are pretty amazing. We'll have to spend some more time with this. Uh, we'll have to spend some more time with this. I've got to get my CDI working. Um, anyway, like I said, that that drive, the, the belt for the drive is uh, in the mail. So hopefully it'll be here soon and maybe I'll be able to actually fix that thing and then get some discs and, and make things happen uh, you know, on real hardware. And then there's a whole world of, of CDI video nightmares that open up to us at that point. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the, the hope anyway. And then someday when that ODE comes out, Oh, Oh, Oh boy. I would love to be able to just load up an SD card full of CDI software and lose my mind forever. Uh, but that's going to do it for us here today. Thanks everybody for coming through and, and hanging out and enjoying kiss with me. Uh, what a, yeah, that's a, that's a hell of a thing. Little Joker's wild junior, all of that sort of stuff. Um, anyway, we'll be back on Friday to rank some NES games. I don't think we could ever rank the CDI library. Everything is just tied for first. You know, so what else are you gonna, what else are you gonna do really? Um, but yes, on Friday, we'll rank some 8-bit Nintendo games. Come on through then until then I'll see you soon.